Okay, the um, iron has had a chance to for the stain on it to flash off over the night and I'm here fixing to put the uh, coat of stain uh, lacquer on it but I have to take a piece of scotch bright and um, uh, kind of go over the the vessel and uh, to knock down any uh, weird things that might have occurred and it, it's not much of an issue it's just something you should do but you gotta you don't want to spend an awful lot of uh, time or a lot of pressure on it because you never you never can tell you know something in the air stuck to the stain and um, can you see what I'm saying? Um, the uh, if anything would have gotten into the you know the stain when it was still wet, say, well you wouldn't want to have a finish over the top of that. So that's the idea of this. It feels pretty good. All right, and then you take <coughs> your. Where in the hell am I? <laughs> you take your trusty air blower. could use a brush but I have a dryer on the well it's not a dryer it's a collector of um, air or water and possibly oil and that keeps it out of the hose most if you have one of those little portable um, air compressors sometimes you'll see water squirting out of the end of whatever you're using that's not a good thing Okay, so now we're going to go in, we're, um, uh, I've got to separate the lid from the main vessel because obviously if I spray finish on there, it's going to get stuck to, to the, to that. So I need to bring that up, but I don't want finish to go inside the, um, vessel itself so give me a few minutes to um, get this um, up a bit and we'll um, we'll pick it up in a sec okay <clears throat> I've got a <clears throat> excuse me I've got a couple of very thin strips of wood in there to separate the lid from the main vessel and we're ready to go into the finish room the uh, Actually, I should push that one in a little bit more, it looks like. Um, hang on a sec. It looks like it's, it's a little, you know, close to there, uh, to the edge. So we'll just push him in. Now we're good. 
it's the they're behind the edge there and one more blow off and off to the finish room I got the same cup that was holding uh, the thing back there while the finish was flash or the stain was flashing off. I'm gonna need something different. Be back in a bit. Okay, I'm ready. All right, get the air hose. This is a a gravity feed, um, HVLP, high velocity, low pressure. And when they say low pressure, <laughs> it could be anywhere between 40 and 60 pounds is what they claim. And what I do is I test it. I test spray it over there on that um, uh, trash barrel over there just to see how the spray is coming out. And I got a um, take a <laughs> I got to take a second and and put on the Darth Vader mask. Okay, we'll give that 15 minutes to uh, dry and 15 to 30 depending on, right now it's, it's pretty warm in here so it shouldn't take too awful long for the first coat and we'll throw the second coat on off camera and I'll show you the uh, finished product back over at the workbench.
Oh, I've been I've been meaning to tell you about this. Um, the uh, <laughs> the workbench is all fine and good for you know putting assembling things and 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 sanding stuff you know like the prima, the preliminary sanding, but when you get to the final product so to speak you don't want to have your 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 piece you know rolling around on a on a rough surface so what you ought to do if you don't already have one you know you could use a moving blanket or a or some kind of a clothy type of thing but go down to your local carpet store and you can get it's called rebond and uh, and the reason it's called rebond is because it's got all those little different colored um, things in there you know all the blue so and you get it four foot wide well that's the way it comes um and since this is a four foot you know wide workbench and it's absolutely just perfect for doing you know finish work i mean when you're you know after the thing is done and kind of well you get the idea and it's really cheap but uh, a moving blanket from Harbor Freight, you know, or something like that is always a good idea to put on the top, you know, for when you get done with or close to done with your project. So I got to I'll wait for a while and then we'll pick this up with the second coat. Okay, the first coat of finish is dried and it's time to take the piece of scotch bright. <clears throat> um there are uh, varying grades of the of the fabric that you know there's coarse medium and this is a light uh, they come in colors I think but after you use it uh, after you use it um, for sanding one thing you should blow it out To make sure that no, make sure that no rough stuff is in there to harm the finish that's underneath. And what we're trying to do is take off any kind of um, uh, you know, overspray, perhaps, or residue, and trying to get it smooth for the second coat. And then, after that, blow it off. And, I don't know if you can, if the, yeah, you can probably see the finish on there. So back to the finish room with this and I'm going to do that off camera because you don't want to waste time watching me spray another coat of finish on the same thing. And I'll be back and we'll talk about how we're going to apply the, um, the name of the, of the baby. Okay, be back in a while. Okay, the second coat is on, and I'm just going to rinse and repeat here with the scotch brake. And then blow it off. 
but blow it off. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to finish this. And this product, this lacquer, is a pre cat from Sherwin. Sherwin Williams uh, pre-cat lacquer what they do is they put a additive in there that's a hardener and it has a shelf life of oh I think it's three months um, I get it by the gallon uh, from them and it the hand rubbed in this case means it's sort of a satin it's not you know very glow I mean it's it's got a shine or a sh uh, a sheen to it but not an awful lot and uh, it's certainly not a gloss but it it, it it looks nice on on applications like this so um, I'm going to do the third coat here off camera and be done with it and now the proceed the uh, part that's left to do is to for my uh, guy in Iowa to um, do the chip carving for the baby's name and then we'll send it off and uh, I think it turned out the the bottom is not finished because who's gonna look at the bottom but there will be a felt uh, base on here to um, uh, for it to you know sit on the shelf and not scratch it or whatever but make it look a little comfortable when it's set when it's you know, when it gets set down all right well this is the end of this series i thank you all for watching i appreciate it and if uh if uh you have any questions you know you can email me uh joe woodworker at gmail.com and or just make a comment I, again, thank you for watching. All right, well, you see me lay down the, the um, um, finish on this urn, and I was waiting on the chip carving here to arrive, and um, I've got the name covered up to, um, to um, well, not to let anybody see unless the the family wants to leave a comment in this in this particular video but a friend of mine Doug who is in Iowa um, he's a chip carver and the you can see the how how nice that is um, a good a job and um, and he wishes to remain sort of anonymous as well um, but you can leave a comment for him also for Doug uh, if you wish but what I did was I put two brass nails uh, in there to support the um, carving onto the face of the box and I'm going to put it back together send it put it in a box and then send it to the family and that's it thank you for watching and uh, follow up later on if you want to leave a comment or not whatever thank you bye